If I cannot give consent to my own death, whose body is this? Who owns my life? Sue Rodriguez made assisted dying a national conversation in the 90s. Terminally ill with ALS, she took her fight to the Supreme Court. It ruled against her. A short time later, with the help of an anonymous doctor, Rodriguez took her own life. Now, assisted dying is back in the headlines, Quebec has made it legal there, and the Supreme Court has reversed its position. It is past time for the laws against assisted dying to be changed. A year ago, after another ALS victim helped launch what's come to be known as the Carter case, the Supreme Court unanimously struck down the ban on doctor-assisted death. Thank you. And ordered the federal government to change its laws by June of this year. They might want to put in measures that we are not killing people who really ought not to be killed. Yesterday, the Trudeau government took its first steps to meet that deadline. The government did introduce legislation that would give dying patients the dignified choice of a peaceful, medically assisted death. The bill doesn't go as far as the three-party parliamentary committee recommended. Minors are excluded, so are those who suffer from depression. And those with dementia cannot give advanced consent for when their condition worsens. Most Canadians support doctor-assisted dying. A recent poll showed 74% back it. But there are strong voices against it. The Catholic Church has called on parishioners to push back. You shall not kill. And some physicians are fiercely opposed. Hastening death is not part of medicine. Sandra Martin's new book is called A Good Death, Making the Most of Our Final Choices. I sat down with Martin last week before the legislation was tabled. Sandra, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, you argue that it's time for a fight for a human right, that the right to a good death is, is a human right, as big as the other human rights that you've seen fought in your lifetime? This is the final choice we have in our lives. And most people aren't going to want to exercise the, so the choice of asking a doctor to help them die. Most of us are going to die perhaps with palliative care or we're just going to fight it out. Some people are going to die with chemo coursing through their brains, uh, through their veins. But it's a choice and we should have some say in how our lives end. We shouldn't have to be hooked up to machines if that isn't what we want. We shouldn't have to suffer intolerable pain. But those choices come with responsibilities. And that means letting our, making sure our wishes are known, talking to our doctors, our lawyers, our politicians, and our families about what it is we want at the end of our lives. So do you see this happening? I do see it happening. I think it's time. The world has changed a lot since Sue Rodriguez brought this issue to the courts. Many other parts of the world, especially Europe, the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the United States, Oregon, had also passed some form of doctor-assisted dying. And so the evidence from those regimes and all the statistics show that there wasn't any, any fear that vulnerable people were going to be killed without you know, just killed. It just, it wasn't there. The evidence was not there. It was tested in court and um, the statistics show that in fact, many people ask for a doctor to help them die, but they don't actually use it. They don't, um, they don't take the, the, uh, the potion or they change their minds. They want the assurance that if things become really bad, there's a way out. What would Sue Rodriguez think today if she could see what's, what's happening? I think that she would be very happy. Uh, what she said a number of times is, I want this for me. This is what I want. I'm not saying it should be for everybody. And I've known other people who have ALS, and for some of them, it's fine. But for her, she didn't want to live that way. I mean, by the time she did her last interview, which, is, which was on CBC, they were using subtitles because she, could, she couldn't enunciate anymore. And the next step was going to be, you know, drowning in her own phlegm. The Canadian Medical Association, they were against it. Now they're saying the doctors should be allowed to follow their own conscience. That's, that's quite a reversal in such a short time. It's been a long time, uh, really. And one of the reasons that Sue, that Sue Rodriguez lost at the Supreme Court in uh, 1993 was the 
the Canadian Medical Association was so against it. I mean, doctors were very much against it. Since then, a lot of things have changed. We have palliative care now, which um, a lot of doctors practice and feel that that is the way that everyone should be eased into dying. To me, there's sometimes a gray area between what is palliative care and what is physician-assisted dying. It's a, just a semantic difference. Uh, but the Canadian Medical Association has moved forward. It, um, it's only a couple of years ago, though, that it decided to allow a free vote. It wants to protect doctors who have conscientious objections. So the question now is, what kind of referral should doctors be obliged to make if a patient comes and asks for help and the doctor has a conscientious objection? Do you directly refer? Is there another process or is there just a website you go to? This is all being worked out still. Because it would be a pretty fundamental change to the relationship. You go to someone to, for them to heal you and now you can go to them to ask them to help you die. It's, uh, it's, it's quite a change. Well, it depends on what you mean by healing because if I'm suffering, I mean, if I go to the doctor and say, you know, here are my symptoms, what can you do for me? And in this particular case, there's nothing they can do for me. So I say, okay, I, I, would you help me end this? It's, it's another kind of caring for your patient. You're a boomer, an early boomer. Um, boomers have pushed for a lot. Is this something that the boomers are, is this going to be their, sort of not their last hurrah, but uh, is this the next big issue for boomers? I think it is, and I mean, a lot of boomers are watching their parents suffer and wondering, is this what's going to happen to me? And they don't want that. They're used to having choice, and they want choice in this particular area as well. Of course, we all think we're going to live forever, but... Die in our, in our sleep, yeah. yeah. What is your advice? You, you, you started writing this book because you say you wanted to understand death and uh, the right to die movement and so on. What have you come to understand for yourself? Um, I did think a lot about that um, when I was writing this book. I want the opportunity to make a choice. And I know that I can't just expect it to happen. It won't just happen unless, you know, I, I have uh, made a, an advanced care directive that I have uh, a power of attorney for health and for property and that I have an updated will and I check them out every year. But do you think Canadians have adjusted their thinking as much as, as you have? I think a lot of people have, and I think that we sh what, the only way we're going to find out is if we talk about it and see what happens. Um, I think we have. I think we're ready for this. I really do. Well, we'll see. Thanks so much. Thank Thanks. you.